Finally, I want to show you one last thing is what happens when uh, there is a leak that is too large for the tester to handle. Um, a tester such as the Model 6600NG can handle leaks up to 15,000 feet per minute, uh, give or take, um, it's volume dependent. We'll be able to control for those leaks uh, below the threshold of 15,000 feet per minute. Above that threshold, uh, I would like to show you what happens and how to uh, uh, react when this situation happens and what to do about it. Let's assume that you are running your low level leak check and you have just finished your self-test. Uh, you have connected your test set to the aircraft and you are now uh, trying to run uh, the low level leak check at 100 knots and 3000 feet above ground for both PS2 and PS1. Um, here you can see on the bottom right uh, that I have left the ports open. Uh, I would like to simulate here now um, a leak that would be too big for the test set to handle. Um, you have to imagine that you hooked up your test set to the aircraft, but there is a very large leak going on, like you forgot to connect the static adapter or pitot adapter, or uh, none of the uh, uh, fittings on the hose assembly have been tightened properly, and there is a very large leak uh, going on. Uh, for me, for the purpose of the training and the simulation, I left the ports open, but for you, that would be uh, more situation like I just described. Um, what we're going to do now is uh, uh, go into control, and uh, see what happens on the test set when uh, the test set is going under control. So to go to control, I'm gonna click on ground as usual. That will set my three channels into control and set the airspeed at zero and the PS2 and PS1 at ground uh, uh, attitude. And click on go. Now note my ports are still open over there. So of course the test set is not going to go anywhere. As you can see, uh, the test set is taking a little bit more time to get out of equalization. That's the first thing to notice. You can see the airspeed is now ramping up at 26 knots. It should be coming back to zero knots and controlling there, but it's not. So that's the first sign that there's something fishy going on right now. Same for the PS2 and PS1. Notice how they are not behaving properly and not stable at minus 225 as they should. And notice that uh, airspeed is now stuck at 35 knots as it should be at zero. But let's assume that you have not uh, seen this and you are now trying to generate the 100 knots for the uh, low level leak check and the 3000 feet here for the attitude. So when I click on go, now it's gonna to try to go to 100 knots and 2800 feet. You should do them one by one, of course, but I'm doing all three together for the sake of simplicity. So here, as you can see, there's not anything being generated. Of course, my ports are wide open. Uh, so the airspeed is stuck at 51 knots. Uh, this attitude here is not meaningful of anything. Um, there are two things now that uh, you can do. The first thing uh, is the right thing to do uh, would be to either change all of your channels here in measure mode or turn off the unit. You have two choices, either turn off the unit and go work on your leak or switch each channel in measure, as I'm doing now. The advantage of doing this is you wouldn't have to reboot the unit and repair the iPad and all of that, so you would save a little bit of time. But when you have a leak like that that is too large for the tester to handle, switch all three channels to measure or turn off the unit and go work on your leak. There is something obvious going on. I'm gonna click on go and the test set will come back to ground that it actually never left because as you can see, the switch channel here were open. Now, the other way that you could do would be the wrong way and I'm going to show it to you so you understand what's going on. So the same will happen. Now, when you're in control like this and you're attempting to reach your target of 100 knots and 2,800 feet, never attempt to fix your leak while you are in control. So that may cause major damage to the aircraft. So you want to be in measure mode or having the unit turned off. Because right now, what the unit is doing is sending as much pressure and vacuum as it can to compensate for that massive leak so it can reach the 100 knots and the 2800 feet. So watch what happens if I'm trying to fix my leak on the go. For example, if you imagine that you had a pitot adapter that was not connected and suddenly you figure it out and 
you will plug this uh, uh, pitot adapter on the pitot probe while the box is in control. Well, this is what will happen. I got a huge surge of pressure that was hard for me to show you, but the rate increased to hundreds of knots, way beyond the 500 knot limit. And same for PS1, and actually I got an error number, so I got lucky, I got error four, actual PS rate value exceeds limit. So I sent a huge surge of pressure to my aircraft, because the tester was trying to compensate for that leak. And the half second before it realized that the leak was now uh, fixed, it was still sending that pressure. So. It is really advisable to, whenever you see that a leak is too large for the tester to handle, turn off the unit or bring it back to measure mode until you have a leak that is acceptable for the tester to handle. Anywhere below 15,000 feet per minute will be manageable for the test set. Thank you for watching the training on the Model 6600 NG. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned many things out of it. If you have any more questions or need extra help on the use of the Model 6600 NG, you can get in touch with us by calling us at 281-325-8300 or going on laversap.com slash aviation for more information and get in touch with us in the contact section. Thank you. Have a good day.